Good morning. Um, hope everybody's well today and that we're enjoying a little bit of sunshine. We've, we've just got a little bit of sunshine just come through the window. You can't really see me properly now. Oh, Eva's just come in to join us. So good morning. It's a lovely Sunday and today we're going to be doing online Sunday school like we did last week. Thank you very much for all the lovely comments that we had last week. It was really nice to know that people enjoyed um, watching and, and doing some of the activities. So I have helpers today and this is my little girl and she's hiding because she's um, she doesn't want to be on the Facebook. And this chap here is Ziggy. Can you hold Ziggy a little bit closer to the camera? Don't drop him. Okay. Now Ziggy is a giant African land snail. Can you see him? He's just waking up. He's a little bit muddy at the moment. I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer so we can see. Hold him still. So the story's not about Ziggy today, but kind of, because Ziggy, who's a snail, hold him still, that's it, sometimes goes to sleep for a couple of days. And we're very concerned when he's asleep for a couple of days because we think maybe he's not going to wake up. But the nature of snails is he does wake up and then he eats again and he's fine. Can you turn him around so we can see his face? I don't know if you can see that. We're Oh, there we go. I'm not very good with the camera, am I? So he's just waking up now. So we're kind of talking a little bit about Ziggy's behaviours in our story today. Would you like to put Ziggy back now, please? Thank you very much. Ziggy lives in a box in our lounge. There we go. He's going back in the box. Right. You go and wash your hands then, please. Go and wash your hands. Thank you very much. When we've touched snails and animals, we must always wash our hands properly. Um, I'm going to turn around a little bit because the sun is in a funny place at the moment, so it's difficult for, for you to see me. So, um, hi to those that are already watching. Afterwards, we're going to put this on um, to Facebook, um, and then hopefully you'll be able to watch. We'll make it public, and you can share it around. So today, um, we're going to start with a little prayer. So we put our hands together. Let's see, what prayer should we say? Should we have, um, should we send out a prayer today? Okay. Father God, show us how to heal the world that you made. Son of God, teach us to walk with those who suffer. Holy Spirit, fill our mouths with the right words. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, help us to show your love to all people. Amen. I didn't hear an amen there. Amen. Thank you very much. We've had a very frightening time, really, and I think it's OK to be a little bit scared because there's lots going on in the world. We hear lots of things on the news about people being poorly and about the coronavirus. And it's really important to know that even though all this is going on, that God is still there watching over us. And that is very much what our story is about today. Could you close the door, please? Thank you. Otherwise, the cats are going to come in as well as a the dog. There's Eva. There we go. Eva's watching. So, our story today is about a chap called Lazarus. Now, Lazarus was a very good friend of Jesus. They might, in these days, I don't think they were quite BFFs, but they might have been close. And Lazarus was a hard worker and he lived with his sisters. And his sisters were called Mary and Martha. They're good, good biblical names, aren't they? Mary and Martha. Um, and Lazarus, he was a bit poorly. And Mary and Martha, they sent a message to Jesus and they lived in a place called Bethany. A little bit like my name, Beth. Um, but Jesus wasn't there. He was somewhere else. Um, and they sent a message to him and they said, Lazarus is really poorly. Is there any chance you can come and see him, please, and, and help heal him? Because we're a bit worried about him. And Jesus said, well, do you know what? Last time I came to Bethany, the people were a bit mean to me. And they threw stones at me and I didn't really like it. Um, I want to come, but I'll have a think about it. Um, but it's okay, trust in God. And then two days later, Jesus went to Bethany to see Lazarus. But when he got there, Lazarus had already died. 
And Jesus felt so sad. And the sisters felt so sad as well because they were cross with Jesus that he hadn't been when he said he was going to go. So I'm going to read you the story as it's laid out in Roots today. I should have brought my glasses with me and I didn't. Lazarus lived in Bethany with his sisters Martha and Mary. One day Lazarus became ill and although Jesus was their good friend, he received a message to say that Lazarus was very ill. He delayed visiting and he stayed where he was because last time he had been to Judea, people had tried to stone him. After two days, Jesus says, Lazarus has fallen asleep. I'm going to wake him up. His disciples were very confused by this. Well, that is a very confusing thing to say, isn't it? And his disciples said, but why go to such a dangerous place just to wake him up? He'll wake up without you. So Jesus spelt it out. Lazarus is dead. I didn't go when he was ill because through him many will see God's glory. Hearing this, Thomas, he was one of the disciples, said to the others, let us follow him. If he is going to be stoned, then we should die with him. Well, I think that's a very good, kind, friendly thing to do. I'm not sure about the dying bit, but I suppose they, you know, if that's your crew. <laughs> Lazarus's sister, Martha, she came out to meet Jesus and she said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. I know, answered Martha, but the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me will live and never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, said Martha. I believe you are the Messiah and the Son of God. And then Martha's sister, Mary, she ran out to meet Jesus and she knelt at his feet crying. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus wept with Mary. And then he said, where is his tomb? And a crowd of mourners followed Jesus to the cave where Lazarus' body had been laid. Lazarus had now been dead for four days. But Jesus said, Roll the stone away. And in the Bible, it says that one of the sisters was actually quite concerned about this. She, she said, actually, if we do that, he's been dead four days. It might be really smelly. So Jesus prayed aloud and the crowd could hear him and they knew that God had sent him. And then he shouted into the cave, Lazarus, come out. Incredibly, Lazarus walked out of the tomb, wrapped in his burial cloths. Jesus said, unwrap him and let him go. And then all the people that saw believed in Jesus. Wow, that is a proper miracle. Is that a proper miracle? Um, I mean, if you're going to be raising people from the dead, so they believed in God and God helped them out, really. And because of that, other people then believed in God. So it's a very important story. And I think this is kind of, um, at the moment, we all can't see our friends and our families. And some of them are poorly and we're worrying an awful lot about them. But if we believe and if we have hope and we have faith, then things will be okay. And it doesn't mean that some people won't get ill. And it doesn't mean that some people won't die. Because unfortunately, that is part of the circle of life and I'm sure you've all watched The Lion King haven't you um, but we have to keep hoping and we can talk to our friends and tell them how much we love them right now so after this is finished I want you to tell the people that you love that you love them I love you thank you very much there we go see we love each other so because it's all very worrying and Martha and Mary they were very worried and they were a little bit angry and disappointed weren't they they must have had lots of feelings going on in their heads do you how do you think they might be feeling um, worried. worried yeah i think worried's a good word um do you think they felt cross with jesus yeah, yeah. because they said can you come because he's dying and they didn't come um what else do you think 
Frustrated, frustrated, that's a really good word, isn't it? Frustrated. Um, I think very sad when he did die. Yeah. Uh, tearful. Tearful, yeah. So they must have had so many feelings. I wonder how they got dealt with their feelings because these days we talk a lot about our feelings, don't we? And we say, if we're feeling sad, we can say, if I'm feeling sad. One of the things it, we might do today is we can draw a feeling flower. Okay, so I've drawn a little flower. And uh, if you could do this at home as well, when you're ready, when you've got some paper and pens. So we draw a flower, there's the middle bit. And these are the petals. And in each petal, you can draw or write a feeling. So what do we think? Do we think Mary and Martha were feeling sad? Should we write sad? Now, the thing is, if I hold this up, it's going to be backwards. So it'll be just, okay? But it does say sad. Um, what else? What other words did we say? Did you say frustrated? I'll see if I can spell frustrated. Frustrated. There we go. So that's frustrated. Can you do a frustrated? Well, I can't really see your frustrated face under that, can we? So I'd be like, mmm, maybe, ooh, ooh, a bit frustrated. Um, so hi to everybody that's already watching. It's really nice to see you. We've got the Barretts and we've got the Wellses. That's lovely to see you. Hi, everybody. Um, sad, frustrated, tearful, you said, didn't you? Yeah. Tearful. These days, if we're feeling something, we can have an emoji, can't we? If we're typing or texting or on, on social media, we have a little emoji. So the emoji for tearful, it's a sad face. And it has a little teardrop coming down. So, uncompleted. uncompleted. Oh, I don't know if that's a word or not. Uncompleted. Um, I know what you mean because it feels like when somebody's died, that a part of you has gone. So it makes you feel uncompleted. Should we go with that? Uncompleted. I hope you all know what she means. Un Incomplete, that's the word we're looking for, incomplete. So Sunday morning brain, incompleted. So we'll pop that up there. Now, there's just a few words that we've put on, but you can add any words you're, you want to. So we've got sad, tearful, frustrated, disappointed, because they were disappointed in Jesus because he didn't get there on time. Disappointed, my spelling is really dreadful. Um, what else? So I've got one petal left. I need another word. Should we put love? Yeah. yeah, because they love Lazarus and they love Jesus, but they were a bit cross with Jesus, even if they loved with him. Love, okay. So we've got all our words and you can do this at home and you can write your words in how you might be feeling. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be about how you're feeling about the story of Lazarus. Could be about how you're feeling about right now with all the stuff that's going on and not going to school and seeing your friends and, and being away from your, maybe some of your family relatives. Um, just being a bit cross, really. Homeschooling. That has a lot of feelings, doesn't it? Yeah, which is rolling her eyes behind that mask. You can't say we have had a lot of feelings with homeschooling. So, but in the middle of this flower. There's a very important bit that hasn't been filled in. What do we think that word might be? Um, nope. Nope. Yeah. Jesus. Okay. So we can put God or Jesus. We put God. Okay. Because no matter how we are feeling, if we're feeling tearful, we talk to God. If we're feeling incomplete, we can talk to God. If we're feeling disappointed, we can talk to God. If we're feeling sad, we can talk to God. Frustrated, God's a really good listener. And love, we can talk to God. Because we don't have to talk to God about bad things, do we? Sometimes we can talk about good things as well. And we can say, God, we love you. Thank you very much for being there. Um, or we can say, God, I'm frustrated. So maybe you could do one of these at home. Um, well, while you're not going to school, and I bet yours would be beautiful, you could fill it in, you could decorate it, you could paint all the petals, make them lovely colours, 
maybe some leaves and some vines going around it. And then you, when you're feeling a bit sad and a bit miserable because you can't see your friends, you can have a look at it and just, you know, remind yourselves that God's there for us, even if we can't go to actual church. Okay, so that's one thing. And it's really important that we can talk to God about these things, isn't it? So, one of the things that I really liked in the story was when Lazarus came out, he was wrapped in burial cloth. What could that possibly mean? We've got another helper. What's his name? Apparently, this is Dr. Smiggles, apparently. And he is wrapped in burial clothing. Kind of looks a little bit like an Egyptian mummy. And that act is because Egyptians, when they're mummified and they're wrapped up, that is burial clothing or cloth. And it's basically bandages. Where are those bandages? There they are. Right. Are you going to help me? Because <laughs> he's not quite wrapped up yet. So you could do this. It's not food, Eva. Eva thinks it's food. Look. Can you see Eva? She's wanting to talk. There you go. Look, it's not food. No, it isn't. So, sit down. Thank you. It's very nice to have all these helpers, isn't it, in Sunday school. So we've got these bandages. Now, if you've got some old bandages, did you know that bandages go out of date? And you'll have a date on them and you're not supposed to use them if they go past their vest before date because the fibres might go in the wounds, you see. So these are really good. If you know anybody that's got a first aid box at work, ask them to check the first aid box and can I have your bandages because they're quite great to play with. And one of the things that we really like doing is playing doctors and nurses. Mm. So you could, you could wrap up a teddy bear or you could wrap up your brother or your sister or take it in turns. You could use ribbon or just cloth. You can cut up some cloth if your mums and dads have got some old cloth and want to cut them up. That would be cool. Um, these are bandages. Oh, I hate to say it because there's a bit of a shortage on toilet roll, but toilet roll is really good for wrapping your friends up in. So you could wrap your brothers and your sisters. And if you haven't got a brother or a sister, maybe wrap one of your parents up. Yeah, yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? But there is a shortage on toilet paper. So you can wrap up a teddy bear with bandages. There you go, can you do it? I'll hold it. Oh, she's dropped it. And wrap them all up, just like an Egyptian mummy. Oh, look, I've dropped my end as well now. Oh, no. I feel a bit mean wrapping his nose up. It worries me that he can't breathe. I know he's a teddy bear, but... You go, how are you doing down there? Are you wrapping... Oh, you're wrapping me up, not the teddy. The silly sausage. Right, there we go. So we're wrapping him up, wrapping up. I think, I think he's definitely ready for burial. How are we doing? Yeah? Well, oh my goodness me, we're getting in a right kerfuffle. It's tricky working with children and animals and dogs and teddy bears and bandages. So hi to all the people that are now watching. It's lovely to see you. I see my helper here wrapping up. The teddy bear. You're going to wave to Sarah and Maggie. There we go. So our teddy bear is now, I would say, ready for burial, yeah? Now, in our country, we dig graves and we use coffins. But in those days, in Jerusalem, they didn't. Um, Israel and things, they used to use um, caves. In Egypt, they use pyramids, don't they? Or they did, rather, in those days. But they used caves. And the cave was in a hill. And in front of it, there was a big stone. So what they did is they used to put the people in the cave, all wrapped up like this, to keep them safe. And then they'd lie them down, lie them down nicely, with um, different herbs and incense and frankincense, different things like that. That's where it comes from the Bible, you know. Um, and then, do you know what they did to close it up? Did they build it? Did they get some bricks and they spent them all up? No, they got a big stone and rolled it up. They did. They got a big stone or a big rock and they would roll it in front of the entrance. So, in the story, it says, 
Where is that? There we go. A crowd of mourners followed Jesus to the cave where Lazarus's body had been laid. Lazarus had been dead for four days, but Jesus asked for the stone to be rolled away. So they rolled the stone away. And the sisters were worried because I know it says in our other in our other children's Bible here. It says, But Lord, he has been dead for four days now, said Martha. There will be a bad smell. And there's the picture of them rolling the stone away. Can you see that? Hi, Wayne writes. So they rolled the stone away. And then what happened? What happened then? Jesus said, Lazarus, come on, out you come. And he did. But when he came out, in his burial clothes, some of them had fallen off because he'd already taken the ones around his feet off because he was walking. And then Jesus said, unwrap him and let him go. So do you want to unwrap him? There you go. Run wrap here now. Oh, blind. Oh, goodness me. Look at all this. Oh, wow. Look, 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 it's just everywhere. Have you got him? That's it. Unwrap. Oh, we're unwrapping Mr. Smiggles. Oh, we've got more. Oh, look, we've got band bandages everywhere. Goodness me. Still unwrapping. Oh my goodness me. How are you doing with your unwrapping? Good. There we go. Oh, oh, look. Oh, there's just a bandage. Fa oh my goodness me. Look. Is he unwrapped yet? Yeah. Is he free? Yeah. Oh, poor Lazarus. I should imagine it was a bit of a shock if you'd, if you'd been asleep for four days and wrapped up and put in a cave and then somebody shouted at you, get up. I should imagine you'd be um, frightened, shocked. Imagine your eyes might hurt as well from the sunshine because it's very dark in caves. And then he was free and he had all his bandages. So there we go. So that's something you can do. And you can, when you're doing it, you can reread the story um, and you can find it online. And I bet you can find some YouTube videos. And I bet there's a Lego video because there's always a Lego video of, of Bible stories, aren't there? We use them a lot in Messy Church. So, one of the other things we did is we've made a tomb. Let me just, oh, close up there of my nose. And I made it out of an old cat food box. So there is the cave and there's the stone. Now, I didn't take a very long time out doing this. But I think you could probably do a really good one. What do you think? If you spent more time than me. So what I did, I put a cat food box and I turned it inside out and glued it back together. And then I painted the rocks grey. And the inside of the cave's a bit darker, you see. Because it's a bit dark and spooky in caves. And then I made a big rock for the front of it. Because that's the rock they rolled away. And then I've stuck some moss on and some flowers. But I think you could really do an excellent job doing this. I think you could stick loads of things on it. Maybe you could do a little Lazarus coming out with his bandages. What do you think? I reckon so. Yeah. I think if we had more time, we would have done that. Uh, maybe you could do Mate Mary and Martha weeping, waiting for him to come out, thinking he's dead. Um, or you could do Jesus saying, come out, Lazarus, come out. What do we reckon? Is that good? Yeah, but you can do whatever you want and then when you've done it you can do a little play you can you can show your parents um, or your family that you're with at the moment and you can say right okay well I've done this let's read the story and I can do all the actions you can get the little people on sticks maybe and then you could say Liz, Jesus said come on Lazarus and then you can do a little stick man with Lazarus coming out okay so that's something you could do so the story like I said at the very beginning, our Ziggy, sometimes he goes to sleep for a couple of days and we think he's died. And we do get scared sometimes, don't we? And we think, oh, you know you haven't put his lid back on, he's not going to escape, is he? <gasps> just put the lid back on. It's very quick. There he is. Can you see him just there? He can be very quick. Can our Ziggy. But just like Lazarus, when he's been asleep for a few days and we think he might be dead, he wakes up and then it's all good. So we always have faith that he's going to wake up again. So we're going to say some prayers to finish with, just some quick ones. And we're going to pray for all the different people in the world. So sit down, have together. Okay, right. 
Dear Lord Jesus, thank you very much for the internet. Thank you that we can come together, even though we're not together, and we can share stories like Lazarus. Dear Jesus, please look after all the poorly people, especially the ones at the moment who are going through some very scary times. Please help the doctors and the nurses in the hospitals. Please help all the care assistants and the care workers. Please help the people in the shops, the ambulance drivers, the firefighters, the police, everybody that's a key worker. God bless all the lorry drivers that are bringing us our food each day. We might not appreciate them, but they're doing a very good job. Thank you for all those people that are putting themselves at risk to keep us safe. Dear Lord, please help everybody stay at home and stay safe, even though it's really tempting to go out for walks when we don't need to. Please help us to get through each day. And this one's for the mums and the dads. Please help us with the homeschooling because it's not as easy as we thought it was. And we're not as young as we were and things change. Please give us the patience to help our children get through the school day and please give our children the patience to deal with us as teachers. Please help us not to be so scared when things aren't going our way and get a little bit frightening. And please watch over all of us every day, and especially the ones that we love and we can't see. Amen. We're here in Amen. Amen. Oh, she's whispering. I don't know why she's whispering. So be safe, everybody. So that was the story of Lazarus. I did want to do another story as well today, but to be honest, I just haven't got the time. Um, and it's all about bones. It's the Valley of the Dry Bones, which sounds kind of cool, actually. Um, it's got bones in it over there. Um, so be safe and we're going to see you again next week. Thank you very much to everybody that's already watched. Um, and I hope that this reaches lots of people. Um, I certainly don't expect to turn into Joe Wicks overnight. Goodness me. This is just for those people that are missing Sunday school at the moment. And we just need something to do on a Sunday to remind us that we're all in this together and we're all missing each other. And we want to say a big hello without saying any names to all the people from West Ardsley Methodist Church and the Sunday School and the Messy Church there because we're really missing you guys. So missing you. Hope to see you soon. Right. Take care and have a great Sunday afternoon. Bye.